marks the end of our series, Pray First, Not Last. It's a sad day, but it doesn't have to be. In fact, we should be overflowing with joy because God wants to spend time with you and with me. Isn't that amazing? I'm so full of joy that I want to worship. So let's stand together and worship. Hey everybody, it's game time, and today we're gonna play a game called This or That. It's a simple game where you'll be presented with two options, and you have to decide if you want option one or if you wanna go with option two. For option one, you'll make this pose. For option two, do this. All right, now that you know what your moves are, let's play the game. All right, round number one. Which one would you prefer, tacos or pizza? I know most of you guys would pick pizza, but personally, I love tacos. I mean, the meat, cheese, the sour cream, it's so good. Now, this one may be a harder one. Would you rather get ice cream or go with a delicious cake? I have loved ice cream since I was a kid, so I need a little bit of ice cream, a little bit of hot fudge, whipped cream on there. Awesome. Some of you who love pets can get very divided on this one. So here it is, dogs or cats. So I am a dog person. I love dogs. My, the biggest dog I ever had was a Great Dane. His name was Toby, 185 pounds. Now imagine it's the hottest day of the summer and you need something refreshing. Would you prefer iced tea or lemonade? So I don't think there's a better summer drink than lemonade. Just great on a hot day. 
All right, here we go for the last round. Beaches or mountains? There's nothing better than visiting a beach. I love playing in the ocean with the waves and hanging out in the sun, it's so cool. Hey, thanks for playing everyone, we had a great time. Now let's get on with our big idea. Our game was all about different things that you love. Some of you may love dogs, some of you may even love cats. Here's something that we love and hope you love too. It's called prayer. Prayer is so important because it helps us spend time with Jesus. God's love is so great and he wants to spend time with you. The truth is spending time with God in prayer is probably one of the wisest and best uses of our time. You see, God can transform us to be more like Jesus as we walk with him in prayer. Our big idea is this. God wants to spend time with me. Let's learn more about this truth through our story together. So pay close attention. So part of God's story is about prayer, and it goes like this. Prayer is what we call a conversation we have with God. That means even though God created the entire universe and has power over all things, He wants to have a relationship with us. He wants us to know Him. That's pretty amazing. We can talk to God anytime, anywhere, about anything. But let's look at four examples of different ways we can pray. One way to pray is to praise God. That's when we tell God what we love about him. Like a guy named Jehoshaphat. He was king of God's family when some big time armies declared war on them. Jehoshaphat was terrified. So he talked to God about it. He said, God, you are the mighty ruler of all things. We don't know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. King Jehoshaphat believed God could help them. So as he went into battle, he sent people ahead of his army to praise God. They said, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Yep, that means he thanked God before he won the war. And when God heard his praise, he caused those big armies to attack each other. Jehoshaphat didn't even have to fight. A second way to pray is to repent. See, we all mess up which means we turn away from God. When we repent, we ask him to forgive us and we turn back to him. One time, another king named David made a big mistake. He took something that wasn't his. Then David tried to cover it up, which turned it into an even bigger mess. When David's good friend Nathan told him he disobeyed God, David repented. He said, have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Mercy is when someone gets forgiveness they don't deserve. And guess what? God will always forgive us when we repent. Of course, anyone can pray to God, not just kings. One woman named Hannah reminds us of a third way we can pray. We can ask God for something. Now, Hannah really wanted to have a baby, and she told God that. But you know what was crazy about her prayer? Even though she really wanted a baby, she said, God, if you give me a son, then I will give him back to you. Kids, isn't that unusual? To ask for something you want, then give it back? Well, a year later, Hannah had a son, and she did exactly what she promised. She gave her son back to God by sending him to live with a priest named Eli and do God's work. And Samuel just so happens to be a great example of a fourth way we can pray. Like any good conversation, we shouldn't do all the talking. We should listen, too. That's because God is in control, and we've got to yield or give in to what He wants. We yield when we listen to what God says and obey Him, no matter what we want. One night, God called Samuel's name three times. When Samuel finally realized God wanted to talk to him, he said, Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. Samuel stopped to listen and God told him things. When Samuel obeyed what God told him, God kept talking to him. And when we pray, when we praise, when we repent, when we ask, and when we yield, 
we remember that he's the one in charge and that we get to talk to him because we're loved by him. And that's some of what the Bible says about prayer. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is also listening to God. There are a lot of ways to pray. Jehoshaphat praised God. David repented. Hannah asked God for what she really, really wanted. Samuel listened. And they all wanted what God wanted more than what they wanted. Prayer reminds us that God is in control. He loves us and wants to be close to us. And that's a part of God's story. I wonder if you've ever made a sandwich before. It's pretty simple, actually. You need a couple slices of bread. We're gonna add some good old meat. And I don't know if you're anything like me. Two slices of cheese. And voila, there's your sandwich. You have all the ingredients you need right here to make a perfect sandwich. Today in our story, Jesus was showing us the ingredients to prayer. Sometimes prayer looks complicated or hard, but Jesus shows us that it's not as hard as we might think. So let's walk through this prayer together. Open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verse 9 to 13, and read with me. If you need time to grab your Bible and open them, press pause until you're ready. Don't worry, we're not going anywhere. All right, as I read through this, I'll be taking pauses to explain certain things, so follow along. It says, pray like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now, hallowed may sound a little weird and you may not have even heard of it. It's a word that means holy or special. And God's name is special and holy. When we pray, hallowed be your name, we're wanting that God would be treated with the highest honor. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask God to help us do God's will and to help us make the world the way God wants it to be. Just like God sees the world in heaven, in this part of the prayer, we're asking God to work through us to help make the earth the way God desires it to be. The verse goes on saying, give us this day our daily bread. Now back in the times when the Bible was written, bread was the basic necessity of life. In prayer, bread is a symbol for asking God to make sure that we have what we need. In verse 12, it states, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Debts is another way of saying things that we do that are wrong or sins. In this prayer, we ask God to forgive us for what we do that is wrong. We also commit to forgiving others as well. It ends by saying, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Temptation is another big word and can be lots of things. It can be as big as wanting to steal from other people or as small as sneaking cookie from the cookie jar. We ask God to help us stay away from the things that we know are wrong for us to do. This is how Jesus shows us how to pray. Like this sandwich, all of these verses are the ingredients to how we are called to pray. Just remember, God wants us to be close with him. He gives us a great way through prayer to continue forming a deep relationship. Go ahead and end your time together as a family by reading scripture and praying. Why don't you read through 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, then pray. We just learned the Lord's Prayer, and I think it would be amazing if you all prayed it together as a family. It's found in Matthew 6, 9 to 13. Thanks for watching, everyone. Tune in next week when we begin our journey through the story of Christmas.